Hi, welcome back to Rorick Knows, helping you become a better you. I am truly pleased and honored to have with me one of the most amazing innovators in plastic surgery, Dr. Spiro Theodoro from New York. Spiro, how are you? Rod, how you doing? I'm Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great honor, Rod. It's my pleasure to have you. Uh, Spiro is an incredibly innovative plastic surgeon. He's not only a sk highly skilled plastic surgeon, but he thinks out of the box and he thinks about what's happening, not one year, two years, but five and 10 years from now. And he's actually uh, uh, a professor of plastic surgery at uh, Hoffa University. He's an active teacher and he's also the chief medical officer of, of an innovative technology uh, company from Israel called InMode that really is spearheading non-invasive technology. So. Spiro, let's talk about nanotechnology. Now, what the heck does nanotechnology have to do with plastic surgery? And only you are the one that actually thought about that. And I remember when you and I were in, the, in Saudi Arabia in the middle of COVID, we were there doing an educational thing. And then Dr. Theodoro put this vest on and I said, what is that? So, so tell us about what is nanotechnologies? Right, so it's basically the use of nano sensors, uh, really, really, really small sensors that you can weave into the cloth of a fabric. And these sensors go on the skin and they measure the current uh, uh, that's transmitted via through the skin and can measure different parameters on the organs, non-invasively. So heart rate, it's just basically uh, uh, stuff that we had to use uh, traditional machines, whether halter monitors or EKGs or stethoscopes for not anymore. You just slap it on and it tells you everything you need to know. And, and uh, it's pretty incredible. And it, it, this is basically like a vest. Right. The only reason is because it also measures tidal volume and respiration and, wow. and, and stuff like that. So as surgeons, it's a cardiopulmonary vest, which makes it very different. You probably heard Rod out there, there's companies doing rhythm strips and right. stuff like that. This is different. This is very different because it's able to give you 128 million data points in 24 hours. So for a post-surgical patient, right? Oh. That's what hit me over the head when I saw it. It's a dream. You can measure, you can measure them breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, walking, posture, what position they're in, all the great things that we need to know you know what happens after surgery what we do yeah and and of course it makes perfect sense because as you and i've talked uh in plastic surgery you know we do this surgery and then they go home and many times we have to rely on them listening to us now we can see if they're listening to us right right that could be good and bad of course but <laughs> <laughs> do you really want to know what they're doing right, they're doing, right? exactly but, uh, but uh, <laughs> like any technology First, the technology leads. This company basically uh, popped up through COVID uh -huh. because of what was going on with COVID in the nursing homes. They got they got approval with Medicare really quick. They got approval really fast with uh, 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 CPT codes. So you can bill insurance for this. Wow. All the CPT codes. So they accelerated through COVID, and they they are where they are today. So I'm like, and when I when I looked at them, I said. We need to bring this to plastic surgery because we are the ones that innovate. Right. We're the ones that are care about the safety of our patients. And even though our patients are healthy, when something happens, it's catastrophic. So it's all over the news, right? right. So it's important that we um, that we look at this. And that's why I, I wanted you guys to evaluate it and take a look at it. And Sherelle did a study with facelifts. And he had his nurses take blood pressures at the same time as a control. And he found they were completely accurate. Uh, and I know you've played around yep. with it, Rod, as well. Right. So I think the future of post-discharge surgery, we innovate in surgery, we innovate it, make minimally invasive, we bring it to the office. It's only natural we also figure out how to keep these patients even safer. Right. No, no, I agree. And and you also did a pilot study where you you did it in patients with body contouring. And, you know, there are certain body contouring right. procedures that you really are not supposed to stay laying on your bottom. And right. we found out that the patients didn't listen, right? Right. So you know, Dan. You know, Dan, of course. Yeah. And Dan Del Vecchio. The we'll, yep. whole thing about BBLs and and the ability, the, the danger, the safety, all that. So we we put on about 30, 30 BBL patients. And aside from the fact that we monitor them and what they were doing afterwards, we always had a theory that it never really made sense. You tell a patient not to sleep on their abdomen. They're going to sleep any way they want, right? You know, because they're not in control of their bodies when they sleep, and it's not going to affect. It's not going to affect the longevity of the fat. 
Right. So, so uh, and I always knew this, but we had to prove it. And sure enough, only one patient slept on their abdomen out of the 30 or 40 we did. Everyone <laughs> slept on the way they wanted. Right, which was you know, <laughs> so typical. It shows, you know, the device shows decubitus, lateral decubitus, prone, supine. But those are great things to know. Yeah. Patient compliance. So how does um, it, how does it work? So it, it's totally wireless. It's, it's totally, totally and you wireless. can monitor you it on your vest on. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's got this little. Uh, you put the vest on. It has a little device in this chest that hooks up to a Wi-Fi to your phone, and it transmits to the cloud, and you get all this information in real time on your phone. So you can see if the patient has an accelerometer on there, so you know how the patient's walking or running, right. and it has it also shows positioning, and tidal volume, respiration, uh, all the great things that we need to, to see how these patients are doing. Um, and at the end of the day, they take it off, they can throw in the washing machine, and put it back on again. So we had wow. it on these patients for five days. Uh, it's a little cumbersome, but they, the patient's compliance was pretty good. But um, we did have one of the patients report that no one followed up with her and she passed out and she didn't know where she was and all that. And we looked at the we looked at the phone and we looked at her history and none of that was true. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, it brings up a lot of legal questions. I mean, do you really want to know what's going on or would you rather stick your head in the sand? But at the end of the day, like all technology, it raises, it gives us information. And then, there, of course, the lawyers are. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. The lawyers follow and try to figure it out, how to screw it up. But the truth is, this has huge implications on post-discharge care, on tummy tucks, on uh, ambulation, of course, and all these other yeah. things that we know. Right. And also, not only is it sounds like it's a lot safer, but also it's more cost effective. I mean, this not only it can be extrapolated to regular care and, and elder care, right? I mean, because so many times, you know, like, you know, my father-in-law would give him this thing to wear, but he never wears it. And, you know, if they could just have this little vest on or something, we'd know exactly how they're doing. This company started as a CHF monitoring device. Really? That's what it's for. Cardiac and CHF, that's where they come from. That's where all their studies and they published an article in Nature. Um, wow. But, you know, we're not, we're pretty simplistic as surgeons. We like simple things. So we're like, hey, can this patient make sure this patient's ambulating, not getting a TBT or blood clot? So we simplified it for the for the phone device to see the basic things that we need as surgeons uh, versus all the CHF parameters, which it does, by the way. Yeah. It can measure aortic pressures non-invasively. Wow. It's like having a spawn GANS. And, but you don't need all the information, of course, as a surgeon. At least a plastic surgeon with healthy patients at Cosmetic, but but exci exciting stuff. It's it's part of a group called Emerging Technologies. Yep. And it's going to be the future of wearable health devices. Right. So where what's the downside of doing this? I mean, I mean right now in our iPhone, I can I know uh, what my heart rate is and a mm -hmm. few other things, but not not anywhere near like this. So what's the downside of having this information about yourself, your loved ones, and also your patients? I mean, I would right. put, I would put this on every one of my patients that goes home. Right, right, uh, that's a two point question. Believe it or not, the majority, for example, the uh, glucose monitoring device, Right. Uh, the majority of the people buying it nowadays are healthy people. Really? That's the trend. It's a Peloton phenomenon. Okay. So, so if you wanted to put this on and go jogging and this obviously works for professional athletes, for military purposes, for right. NFL teams, right? To maximize your output, your cardiac output. Look at all the things that go on, fatigue. Wow. It's got a numerous applications. Basically, it's a CPU, yeah. right? It's a cardiopulmonary CPU. So, yes, you can put it on the patients. The downside is who's, who's looking at the phone or who's monitoring them, right? right? So you could put alerts in there to alert you to certain parameters, the pressure drops, and get around all that. But obviously, you don't want to create more work for yourself. So you could have your nurse in the office, you know, carry that phone, uh, or or if you really want to be the one, you certainly can. But you can you can change up parameters in there to know if something catastrophic is going on, and if something happens, are you liable or not? And that happens with anything. Right. When the Haltram monitors came out, every time there's new technology, it raises those questions. There's disclaimers you can put in place, of course, that this is not a treatment device, it's a diagnostic device. Right. But the company is speaking to companies like Zoll, so this device potentially can shock you if you go into an arrhythmia and things like that. So really? this is just <laughs> this is just the ability to diagnose 
and to treat, that will be the next generation. Wow. So how close is this technology, which is exciting, to becoming clinically reality in, in, like right. in our field? So um, the device is FDA approved for many things. It basically replaces a lot of like six pieces of equipment, you know, stethoscope and right. ultra monitors and stuff like that. What they're in the process of getting though is a blood pressure AI algorithm clearance. Okay. And that no company has that. There's about 40 companies trying to do that right now. No one has achieved it to measure blood pressure remotely through an AI algorithm, but FDA cleared. So when you have your, for example, your Apple Watch, right, and it shows your heart rate, and right, you can't use that to diagnose and treat. You exactly. can use it as a, as a consumer. Right. And ninety percent of that data is not clear. Uh, only ten oh, really? percent is clear, and the rest is just an algorithm cleaning it up for you. So that Apple phone is great, but if you want to change your pressure on medication and do something, you can't. So this is medical grade. That's an important distinction. Okay. That this is medical grade. So once they get that FDA clearance for that blood pressure algorithm, be the first company ever to be able to do that. Uh, it'd be a huge milestone. I think uh, a lot of a lot of people would want to have that in, uh, put in. You know, whether it's you know companies like Apple or Google Health or Amazon would be all over it. I would think. Yeah. No, I I find it intriguing. You're right. They would all adapt it because people a, a lot of young people, people would just want to say, I want to see how I'm conditioning. And actually then it would serve as a baseline to say improve their conditioning, right? But you'd have so many more parameters than just the heart rate we have now. That's a, that's amazing. So, so Spiro, how do you, would this be available obviously in different forms where it would, what about the cost? I mean, that's always a thing that people come up with. So, so there's two ways to look at it. This is insurance reimbursable. So after COVID, every visit that you do with your doctor, whether it's remote or in person, still bills the same way. The government didn't pull that back. Okay. What this allows you to do for a cardiologist or a simple exam, it allows you to do a level four consultation because now you have all that monitoring going on. So you ship it to your patient, right. you see them remotely, and you can do a level four consultation that's three, four hundred dollars, right? So you can bill insurance for it. They're still not, they're, they're working on the pricing and all that, but that's for the insurance-based population. So if you have an insurance set up as a plastic surgeon billing apparatus already in place, yep. you can monitor all your patients uh, because I don't think, I'm not sure about plastic surgery, whether you have a post-op global fee of 60 days, but you certainly can bill your patients remotely and check them remotely by sending this to their house and putting it on and arranging for a Zoom visit by, and getting all the vitals ahead of time on the cloud prior to which your nurse can set up. So your office, instead of having two rooms and seeing 20 patients, can have two rooms and see 80 patients because half of them can be gone outside of the <laughs> office. Not big so there are ways to do this. Right. Now, as far as the cosmetic plastic surgery patients, we, we told our patients, hey, what would you pay to have me look at your vitals and make sure heart rate and all that and everything's fine? And they'll say, would you pay $1,000 more? all day long, right? right? Who doesn't want their doctor looking at everything? Maybe they'll have a nurse. So so from a cash pace perspective as a plastic surgeon, it's right. an easy sell to add on. Uh, but but commercialization, as soon as they get that FDI, FDA algorithm uh, approved, now that blood pressure that you're seeing, you can treat it remotely, wow. right? And consider this, now for CHF, Rod, what's going on? You take your blood pressure pill, you go see the doctor, he changes it, right, for example, high right. blood pressure. Then you come in three months, he changes it again. He checks you at the office, he wears his white coat, you get white coat <laughs> hop retention. So imagine that on two data points, right. just two data points, on two visits, he's treating you. Which that's makes, archaic. That's, that's terrible. Archaic. That's archaic. So that has all gonna change. Right. You know, that's all going to change because you might have run that morning. You might have had a cup of coffee that morning. You might have what you might be scared. You know, all those things. Right. That so makes you just put the. So imagine. So he could just look far, at that. Yeah, he could just look at that and he'd say the data point, thousands of data points from like the last three weeks. And then he could make a decision. You know what they say about AI? Everyone's using AI now. It's like a hot buzzword, right? Right. The truth is, is AI going to change the world? And I don't think AI is going to change the world, Rod. I think I think people who are using AI will change the world. Yep, 
that makes sense. That makes sense. And also, I think that sounds like better better medical care too, because you're right. If, you know, if I could see the drainage output from something not just that day, from the whole week, I'll know exactly what to do, uh, whether it's a tummy tuck or something. So, so amazing. So what 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 do you think is next? So you envision this in the next couple of years, or when? Uh, I'm when? hoping. I'm hoping by you know. Late next year, it'll be a product that's being sold out there, you know. Wow. Um, but uh, we don't, we don't, we have the, the company has a lot of interest from, 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 you know, companies that are want to enter the healthcare space, whether it's the Amazons of the world or it's digital health. Right. So right. I don't know what what's going to happen, but as soon as they get the FDA, we'll be more clear on that. Uh, there's nothing I want more is to use it all the time, right? Yeah. So, no, I think I think so it's brilliant. We'll I hopefully by next year we'll be there. And right. We'll try it out and, and we'll it, start incorporating our practices. But as a plastic surgeon, you know, it's all about safety. And their patient wants the latest technology. They'll say, my guy puts this on me after surgery. Or my girl, will, right? So he's safe. And if your guy's not doing it, he's not a good doctor. So that's what happens. And, and that, that's so true. And also, it makes sense. I mean, I would, you know, my patients would ad adopt this in a minute, just like yours. I mean, they, they love that stuff. And, and, you know, it's all about being a, a good doctor. So, you know, that's, and that's really great. So, all right, well. Dr. Theodore, always a pleasure to have you uh, and talk to you. You always are insightful and always learn a lot from you. So, so you want to be your best you, watch out for this new amazing technology, nanotechnology and plastic surgery. One of the leaders in this, Dr. Spiro Theodoro. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you and getting a follow-up from you soon. Thank you. Rod, thank you so much for having me. It's always a great honor. You Appreciate bet. it. Thank you. Thank you for your work.